Hi everybody, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. You've got to have a personal style if you're a photographer, right? Really? Is that where we're at these days? Is that you have to box yourself into a corner and only produce images in a certain way and in a certain style? Have we got to limit the way we can articulate ourselves? Have we got to be less than we could be? In this week's video, I want to examine just how ridiculous it is to suggest that we have to have a personal style. Uh, I was told that 20 odd years ago when I started as a photographer, if you don't have a personal style, you're not a professional photographer, you're not a good photographer, you're not a recognizable photographer. So let's look at that logically and sensibly. And by the end of this video, I would like you to ask yourself, do you need a personal style? And have you been going down a road that's only going to take you in one direction for the rest of your life? Let's start by comparing this to music. We have lots of taste when it comes to music. I've just dived into my uh, Spotify catalog here and just looking through the albums that I have in my collection uh, from classics such as Queen and Jean-Michel Jarre to Iron Maiden to Pink Floyd, uh, David Sylvian, Kate Bush, Rush, of course, uh, my old time favorites. Um, Genesis, yes, uh, uh, classical music, contemporary classical music, Philip Glass, Steve Reich, uh, you know, you name it, it's in there. And why do I have such a diverse choice of music? Well, because some days I fancy listening to head banging thrash metal from the 1980s because it gets energy rising and it makes me feel all pumped up and motivated. Or if I'm out for a run or I'm on a treadmill, it gets me energized. So that diversity of music that I listen to reflects all the different moods, emotions, the different type of people I am. You know, obviously if uh, you know, you're a young person and you're wanting to have a date and you get someone back to your apartment, uh, putting on Iron Maiden might not be the best move, whereas a bit of Barry White may well uh, create circumstances which have a favorable outcome. We are expressive people. We need to express ourselves and we are variable. All of us know what it feels like to be sad. All of us know what it feels like to be happy and in love and joyful. Are the aesthetics of sadness the same as those of joy and happiness? No, I don't believe they are. Let's just have a quick look in my Lightroom catalogue here and I've just dragged through a few photographs, some of them going back right to the beginning of my photography career. And as you can see just from this grid, they're quite diverse, you know, from bird photographs to very minimalistic, simple scenes, uh, more classical landscapes, but with a twist, you know, the, 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 the central uh, sort of symmetrical composition that we have here. I went through my phantasmagoria phase of <laughs> processing things uh, up the yin yang to make them look as dramatic and beautiful as possible, even though it wasn't what I experienced. Uh, quirky little things where I would find, uh, so this, this photograph kind of represents my imagination and curiosity. Uh, again, finding uh, connections between foregrounds and backgrounds, sort of inquisitiveness again, total high key minimalism, stripped down basic black and whites, you know, the, the diversity and this is just scratching the surface of the hundreds of thousands of photographs I've made in the last 20 odd years since I got back into photography um, back in the early 2000s. Personal style is a, a cul-de-sac that you go into, you're driving down the road with all of these different options ahead of you with signs telling you you can go north, south, east, west, up, down, any which way you want. And personal style is a cul-de-sac Yes, you could be a bird photographer, you could be a landscape photographer, you could be a portrait photographer or a wedding photographer or a street photographer or a macro photographer. All of these things are somewhat genres, I suppose, but you are not limited to how you articulate yourself within any particular genre of photography that you're interested in. I've got bird photographs going back that are all blurry and impressionistic and very expressive. And I've got other photographs that are much more representative of the species. Personal style 
is the same as your record collection. If I went back into my Spotify there and clicked on one artist, and even within the artist, you've got this massive diversity of the type of music that they put out. Some bands evolve and change. Their personal style isn't limited to the one album they did in 1976 that made them famous. I want you to consider this question. In all of the photographs that you have in your catalogue, pick 20 of them and throw them into a collection or into a separate folder and take a look at them and see how diverse they are. Try and identify which ones were made when you were feeling optimistic or when you were feeling pessimistic. Look at the photographs that you made when you were full of joy and enthusiasm. Perhaps the light was kicking off and you were just absolutely overwhelmed with emotion. And then look at photographs you made on a dull day that still speak to you, but of different emotions, different senses, different feelings. If you want to choose a single personal style like some photographers do and they make the same photograph again and again and again for 30 years of their lives, staying static and not evolving, if that is what you want to emulate, I probably suspect that expressive photography may not be the channel for you to follow or subscribe to because everything I want to do on here is to make you an individual and for you to be able to express as many different emotions and versions of yourself that you choose because that way your creativity and your art and your expression and your articulation and your self-value and self-worth are all going to increase. Now, personal style doesn't have to be confused with a body of work that's designed to be a body of work. Uh, taking my new book, for example, Out of Darkness, uh, and this is just a selection of some of the images that are in the book, here we have images that could be considered to be stylistic in that they are all of a similar subject. They're all uh, photographs of sand. They're all uh, somewhat intimate. They're all somewhat abstract um, and they are graphical and they all have a square aspect ratio. So every one of the 132 photographs that's in the book is of the same subject. But, and th this is the point about personal style is, the darkest images, the moodiest images, the most intense images, they were made to reflect the very dark side of my unfortunately depressed and panic-stricken mind that I had uh, five or six years ago. I'd been living with panic and anxiety and depression for nearly 30 years of my life. And I suddenly realized that I could make photographs that represented those feelings, uh, you know, cooler and darker, but with also a spring of hope in them. And as you can see, as we move through from the dark into the lighter side of the images, there's a very strong evolution, a very strong emotional evolution from dark and melancholic to bright and airy and open. The feel of the warmer, more sensuous, curvy images is very, very different from the dark angular photographs that we see at the beginning of this process. These are not, this isn't a style as such. This is representing the very broad spectrum of my emotional aesthetics. I always consider landscape photography to be this opportunity to find all sorts of different triggers and emotions in the landscape, things that make us happy, things that make us thoughtful, reflective, introspective, uh, somewhat melancholic sometimes going out and photographing in the rain on a misty, wet Scottish afternoon you're unlikely to be feeling that sense of joy, but you can do and you can make images that are light and bright and energetic. Photography is about experiencing, witnessing and feeling diversity in our lives and then articulating that range of diversity to another human. This is what art is. This is the point of art, is for some of us to make these observations and share them with other people. Uh, I hope you find these little rants of mine somewhat useful and give you an opportunity to ask these questions. And I want to challenge you to answer the question. Last week, when we looked at the snapshot function of Lightroom, they are perfect examples of making multiple versions from a single RAW file 
that reflect a whole range of diverse emotions. If you haven't checked that video, I'll leave a link up at the top of the screen here. Finally, before I finish, just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, we've had a few cancellations for the spring, uh, for the January workshops in northern Spain that Adam Gibbs and I are going to be running, uh, scheduling issues and people not being able to make it for various reasons. Uh, if you are interested in coming to the north coast of Spain with Adam and myself, there's a link in the description here that you can go to and uh, please come and uh, register to the workshop and we are going to have a marvellous time in a beautiful place and uh, we will be looking at all the different ways that you can express multiple versions of yourself. Um, thanks for tuning in as always, really appreciate it. You're doing us a favour by hitting the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Uh, and if you feel you have anything to add to this debate about personal style, please leave a comment in the, the bottom there as well. Uh, that's it for today. I'm going to go out on a beautiful autumn morning here in the west coast of Scotland and make photographs that express my love of that time. And uh, I'll make them all dark and moody because I'm a one-trick pony. Bye for now. Thank you.